All right, so we'll keep moving right along with this tutorial. Um, let's go ahead and look at one more time what we're trying to make here. So we're, we're still trying to make this final product. And right now we're focusing on layer two and layer one, okay? So why don't we make this a little more realistic and let's get rid of this little music note up here, okay? So I'm gonna, I don't know if you remember how to fold and unfold code. We can do command option to the left and to fold it, and it just kind of minimizes things. And command option to the right reopens it, okay? Or you can just double tap on these. You can just double tap. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the scroll view for a little bit, okay? So remember, Z stack is each layer. So I'm gonna, if you can remember this right here, okay? What we'll do is we'll actually write it out. So layer one refers to this. Layer two refers to this. So we're not gonna look at layer layer two for a couple minutes here. We're gonna look at layer one, okay? So if you remember. Layer one was this music note. Rather than having that music note, why don't we uh, just put something that's a little more realistic. So this is Spotify app, so we're gonna use album covers. So what I did is I went ahead and picked my favorite album cover. So I really like Paradise Valley by John Mayer. So I downloaded that, this is that right there, okay? And we can bring our own images into the assets folder. So we can delete this heart, we're never gonna use that again. I'm gonna drag and drop that in there. And I'm going to rename it so it's nice and easy. I'm just going to name it Paradise Valley. I'm writing that in camel case. Camel case means that the first word is lowercase. Every word after is uh, capital for the first letter, and there's no spaces in between. That's because spaces are not really a good thing in code. So we'll go back over for here, and we will now, we can write Paradise Valley in here. And what I should get is that album cover in my preview. Now, it, we're going to see some issues, and you'll, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So, like I said, we got some issues here. We have this huge image that's kind of just taking over our whole screen. So the first thing is first. What we'll go ahead and do is, for this image, we need to make it resizable. So I can go here and type resizable. And now that image is indeed resizable. So if you notice, that image is kind of hanging out in the back here. Do you see how it's, it's huge and it's, it did indeed push down title and subtitle. It is technically still in its proper place from an aspect of its Z dimension. So it's still back here, it's in here. And this guy is still scrolling on top, but it, nothing's in the right spot. So. We've made this resizable, but let's go ahead and actually, let's go ahead and change the frame too. So let's say the frame is going to have a height of 50. Uh, let's say it's 100. And a width of 100 as well. Something you'll catch on to over time is that width has to be written first. It'll, it'll notify you if you're violating something small like that. It's an easy fix. And there we go. So we put resizable, and here we go. It's scaled nicely. That's exactly, uh, we'll make it a little bigger. We're trying to make it a little realistic. So let's make it 150 and 150. Maybe even 200. So that looks about right. So now that we got that settled down, we need to we need to increase the size of the spacer up here, this area, this clear space, so that it's ideal for that. So if we go back to the scroll view in layer two, that spacer had a height of 200. Instead of trying to find this section of code every single time, why don't we do something a little different? So up here, before I start talking about the body here, okay, I'm going to write something. I'm going to write var, which means I'm going to declare a new variable, and I'm going to name that variable content. Let's actually name it top spacer height. So that's just I just chose to give it this arbitrary name. You could have named it Potato Alfredo, and it would have been exactly as good. But I chose top spacer height because it's descriptive. And so now, when I write this semi or sorry this colon here, that's I'm going to say what kind of it, what kind of variable it is. Is it a word? Is it a number? Is it you know what is it? So I wrote that it's a CG float. And a CG float is a type of number. CG stands for core graphics, so and float is a type of number. There's integers, uh, integers can't. There's decimals. There's all these different types. So a float is a type. So this is a float type of number, and it's made for core graphics. CG float. 
and I'm going to name so that we have a CG float named top spacer height. Now I'm going to call I'm going to give it a value of 250. And what I can do now is I can actually copy that. I can use, I can refer to this from now on instead of writing 200. I can actually take this number. I can put it in here. So now the height of this is going to be equal to 250. Sure enough, you'll see it'll scale. So there's 250. Watch 260 now. I hit resume. Feels like get a little more space down here. So on and so forth. So realistically, if I zoom out here, we're probably gonna need about maybe 300, okay, so or three, even 350. So now, instead of trying to find the area where I wrote this number <coughs> for height. I can just change it up here in the in this top area. So top spacer underscore height. And we're going to need to refer to that height in a, few, for a few different times. So it's good that we have it nice and easily accessible. So there we go. This is truly starting to look a little bit like this here. So let's go ahead and move on to the next part. Why don't we try to create this gradient? So for that gradient, what we're going to do is instead of giving this a background of color red with an opacity of 0 0.3, we're going to delete that. Remember, we're in layer 2, we're looking in the scroll view, the V stack specifically, we're looking at uh, this spacer in the V stack, that's the top one, and that is this area. I keep reiterating that just you know, to make sure we don't get lost along the way. So background, instead of putting a color, why don't we put a gradient? So remember this button up here, I can search for different things. I can search for spacers, stacks, uh, text, text fields, whatever I need. So I'm going to search for a linear gradient. So I drag that linear gradient and I drop him into the background. And if I actually just let it update like that, I get this. So, so obviously it's not exactly what I wanted, but it is a really telling based on the default values. So if you read through it, it says the background is now a linear gradient with the colors red, to blue, it's exactly what you think it is, and it starts on the leading and ends on the trailing. So when it comes to the Swift environment, you don't have a top, bottom, left and right, it's top, bottom, leading and trailing. So the right is trailing and the left is leading. So we don't want a gradient that goes left and right, we want one that goes up and down. So we want one that starts at the top and ends at the bottom. We hit, and there you go, it's exactly what we're looking for. Now the next thing is, we want, let's see, gradient. And we will say colors. And now we have an array, which is a list. And we need to list all the colors that we want it to go through. So we want it to go through, uh, let's say we want it to go through uh, red. Maybe we wanted to go to black. Let's see what we get. Just kind of backtracking to make sure we didn't mess anything up along the way. So that should be good. It's just going to try to load that up. So it seems like we're having a bit of an issue here. But the idea is that I'm going to restart here and just I'm going to close this up and save and quit. And we'll just restart that. Sometimes what you'll find is when you're running the canvas, actually, um, the autocomplete tends to disappear or just kind of lags behind. So. Let's run that again. Especially if you have a lot going on in your computer at the same time. So as you can see, we've got a lot going on here. So yeah, something simple. We just missed a comma because this is a list. So we have to comma separate everything in our list. So we created a background with a linear gradient and the colors are from red to black. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like in the canvas. Canvas is going to give us exactly what we think we put in. 
Sure enough, we got a red to black fade. We're getting there. We don't want red to black, though. If you remember, what we're looking for is clear to black. So if I write clear, updates in real time. This is truly starting to look a lot like this now. So what I like to do is I feel like I get the most customizability when I actually put a lot of listing here. So what it's creating is this is now going to be a gradient that goes from clear to clear to clear to clear to black. And what that means is it's going to be clear to clear to clear to clear to clear to black. So that helps us push down the start of that fade to a lower portion. So I might even put another one. Actually, what I'll do instead is I probably want to boost the size of that spacer so that the fade starts even lower. So maybe even 400 might be a better number. And that is indeed something that I like a little bit better. So let's go ahead and let's look at this. So if we look here, we like to have a white title and a gray subtitle. So we can modify those things by closing that up and we can find where it says we're back to layer one, okay? In layer one, that text title, we want a foreground color of dot white. And we want a foreground color for the subtitle of light gray. But instead of just doing the nice and easy light gray, I'm going to show you something new here. What we'll do is we're going to look at RGB. So RGB is the red, green, and blue spectrum. So if I actually try to go use a color picker, um, color pickers, the, the way they generally work is you can make any color um, using red, green, and blue. So a white would be a perfect, so a white would be, and it's usually on a scale of zero to 256. So, um, it, well, in the case of Xcode, it's on a scale of zero to one. So if I were to say, I want a color that's, that's zero, 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 red, green, blue, it's black. If they're all equal, then you have a gray scale. So if it's zero, 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 it's black. If it's one, 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 it's white. And if it's 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.5, it's gray. And that's exactly what we were hoping for. So now what we have is we have a title that's white, and it's hard to see. But then we also have a subtitle, and that subtitle is gray. Now when we change this color here from this yellow that we had, this, oh, this yellow right here, it'll be easier and easier to see when we move to a darker color. But that takes us to the end of that, and we will continue on in the next video. All right, I'll see you in the next one.